First off, I need to apologize for any sound that you hear. They're doing construction on the unit next door. They've been doing it for like two weeks and I'm pretty sure it's a studio. So I don't know. It better look like an Apple store. It better look like an Apple store. What up? My name is Jay Fox. Welcome to the Made You Looks channel. And today, I don't know if this is a controversial video or not. I don't know. But I wanted to share some style tips that lesbians are making, have made, including myself. I've made some of these in the past as well. And I noticed that when I stopped making these mistakes, my style did improve. So I'm not, this is not like an instructional video. I'm not trying to tell you that you need to do these things. Cause if you do do any of these things and you like it, girl, wear what you want, okay? These are just things that I've noticed that I've done and that I don't know. Like, it's just the best decision that we can make today. You know what I mean? Well, let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and get into it. Being too matchy matchy, right? And what I mean by that, I mean, you got the red shoes, you got the red belt, you got the red watch, you got the red hat, you got the red shirt, you got the red bag. It's too much. It's, I think it can be a little too much. And the thing is, is that I think when people do that, I feel like they're trying to show that they're being very thoughtful about their outfit, right? So if they got red and black and purple shoes on, well, I'm gonna just put on a red and black and purple uh, shirt and then maybe like a red and purple watch and like a red hat, you know what I mean? But to me, to me, just me, I think that in their effort to seem thoughtful about their outfit, it shows the opposite to me though, because to me it's pretty easy. This is like one of the first style like lessons or practices that we learned, which was like in middle school, high school, you get your new kicks for the new year, for the new school year, you know, and you wanna be fresh as hell, you wanna be fly or whatever. And so you just buy, you know, it's a simple top that has the same colors in the top that are in your sneakers. However, I actually feel like it shows that you are a bit more stylish or more thoughtful when putting your outfits together, when you can just choose complimentary colors or just choose one or two colors and then bring it up, up to the top, you know, to coordinate your outfit. I think that you show your true style when you are kind of picking the colors that are going to go within your outfit. Like for me, if I had all red shoes, I probably wouldn't wear like, you know, red this and red that and red that. Most likely I would probably do like navy, even white, maybe gray, black and white. You know, there are complementary colors where it doesn't have to be so matchy matchy. Or you can go to the full so other side of the spectrum and do a completely monochrome look. And I think that those look really sophisticated and elevated. And I think that a lot of people can pull monochrome looks off and they look just, they just look so good. And I think that they give the same kind of energy that you're trying to give with the red and 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 the red. You know, I think that by either doing the monochrome or the achromatic or, you know, finding those complimentary colors in the outfit, it shows the same thought process as the more matchy matchy look, but it's just executed in a way that is more sophisticated. And in my opinion, my humble opinion, just better. Number two. Oh, I feel like <laughs> the married folks are going to be mad at me for this one. Wearing men's suits that just don't fit. So let me give you some context. So I used to work at Calvin Klein. I worked for Calvin Klein for like four years and I fitted men for suits. I stocked suits. So I learned a lot about how suits and how suits should look. They were on men's bodies, like cis men's bodies. But you know, I learned enough to know what a suit, regardless of the gender of the person who's wearing it, what it should look like. And so it makes me kind of sad <laughs> when I see lesbians getting married to the, to the girl of their dreams. You know, they got their fresh straight backs and then they're walking down the aisle with these massive suits and the shoulder pads don't, they're out to here. The pant legs are stacking up at the bottom. The sleeves are going all the way down, like past the knuckles. It's just too big. And the thing is, is that like, I know exactly what you want. I know exactly what you're going for. You want that masculine, that buttoned up, that tuxedo look and it's very achievable, but you've got to know your girl tailoring. You've got to know your girl tailoring, okay? Cause it's just, these suits are just swallowing these people up. And, and then for lesbians who do have like broad shoulders and maybe they're super tall, or they do have like big arms, like things that aren't necessarily workarounds for them when finding men's suits, having that fine tuning of a tailor going through and actually fitting the suit to your body is going to take that suit from looking like, oh, that's, that's just, Jess and she just wearing a suit 
to, oh my God, just looks amazing in that suit. Because when a suit is tailored to your body, it's just, it's just chef's kiss. It's like a Stouffer's lasagna versus your grandma's lasagna. You know, it's like, is a Stouffer's fine? Yeah, is a Stouffer's good? Yeah, but your me ma's lasagna, it just hits different. When you taste it, you're like, oh, this is actually what I wanted. This is actually what I came for. This was fine. This is good for a meantime, in between time, but this, this is king, you know? And the thing is, is that when a suit fits you really well, you feel amazing. There is nothing that beats the feeling of a suit, period, but a suit that fits you so amazingly. I can't, I wish that more people um, were able to feel this feeling because I also know that being able to get things tailored and having really nice suits and having them look a certain way, like that costs money and a lot of people don't have it. So they kind of have to work with what they got. So I wish there was a way that every like person of masculine center could feel this feeling. But yeah, it's giving Miss Trunchbull. It's giving very much that. Number three, this was the lesson that took me the longest to learn. Um, but skinny jeans don't go with everything. Um, I think that they go with a lot of things and I think that skinny jeans are very trendy and stylish and they make your legs look long and, um, well, not all the time actually, but I think that they can make your legs look long. I think that they look good with a lot of different outfits, but they're not the only type of jeans that exist. You know what sucks? It sucks when you have a really cool shirt button up, sweater, whatever the top is giving. And then you have nothing but basic ass skinny jeans to wear with it. I've realized, and I learned this lesson from my good friend Ro, having a variety of pants, as far as patterns, cuts, lengths, fits, goes, it's just as important as your top. And when you have a really cool top, it almost like sullies your outfit by wearing those same basic ass skinny jeans that you wear every day. Maybe the same skinny jeans that you wear to work. I've also realized that, say if you have a chunkier shoe aesthetic, or if you just have a bigger foot, skinny jeans can often make your feet look humongous, depending on the shoe. I will, and I have to admit that when I started embracing different cuts, more wide jeans or straight legs, my style started to develop more because there's just more variety and more to play with in your closet, you know? Like, it also gives you more variety as far as shape goes. I think that that's something that I'm really interested in, keen on for my own personal style is shape and finding outfits and crafting outfits that give my body a certain shape. Um, like if you ever like seen like Rihanna's clothes or like when there's, or when there's like corsets built into things like, or even pants that kind of come with a very unique shape. Like I like the idea of thinking about the shape of my outfit and what shape it's going to give me rather than having the same silhouette because I'm wearing nothing but skinny jeans for every outfit, you know? There's a lot of interesting outfits that you can put together when you don't have just one type of pant to work with. Maybe step out, maybe get a crop skinny jean, maybe get a high-waisted skinny jean, I don't know, there's options. I lied, this was the hardest lesson for me to learn. Hats don't go with every outfit as I'm wearing a hat. My hair looks ridiculous, so that's why I'm wearing a hat, okay? If you've been following me for a while, if you say if you're if you are new here and you have no idea that I had a whole other channel, still have that channel that I've been posting on for about 10 years now. If you go way, way, way back in the archives, I used to wear a backwards hat for every single outfit. It was my thing. I did it for so long, so many years. I wore hats. And it never dawned on me that like, does this actually go with this outfit though? I think in recent trends, a lot of people have been wearing like baseball caps with suits or like baseball caps with like more tailored stuff. And I think it, that that looks good. So I'm not even trying to say that like hats don't go with anything or hats don't go with a lot of things. But I think that because I feel like I made hats my thing, I just wore them with everything, with no consideration to, does this even elevate my outfit? Does it add to my outfit in any type of way? Just, does this need to be here? You know what I mean? Like, do I benefit from having my hair up? Like, my hair is very short, so I don't have 
I can't do an updo. My hair isn't a permanent updo, okay? Um, I can't do a bun, I can't do a ponytail, I can't, you know, wear it flat, straight, flat iron, whatever. And I think that when you do have hair, when you do have that flexibility, you will notice that there are some outfits that look better when you have your hair up versus your hair down, or when you have a ponytail versus a bun, or when you do have a half down. Like, depending on what your hair is giving, what's on your head, it can make your whole look come together or just kind of change the tone of your outfit. And the thing is, I was wearing baseball caps and like snapback caps, not considering fedoras, not considering like a wide brim hat, not considering a beret. Like there are other types of hats that I also just didn't wear. And so I think the mistake that I'm actually trying to get at here is the hat, your favorite hat, your favorite snapback, maybe it's time to try a different type of hat or maybe it's time to just put the hat away and just do the top knot for a while. You know? But yeah, I definitely just didn't even think. I didn't think about it. I still have a lot of my hats and I can't get rid of them. I just can't, they're just too sentimental to me. But the, the thing is, I would always buy them but I would very rarely switch them out. So exploring different types of hats, exploring like how my outfit would look without the hat is something that I wish I did more of. Okay, this last mistake, I feel like this one is gonna I'm not trying to target the baby gaze, but I feel like inherently it's going to do that. The last mistake is the unnecessary bow tie. Here's the thing about bow ties. I think that they have a place in this world for everyone. However, I think that they really only work if the occasion, occasion, honestly, everything's online. So yes, the occasion, if the occasion calls for it. So formal events like proms, uh, weddings, or even like super fancy formal dinners, that type of thing. And the thing is, is that you can wear a bow tie for any occasion that you, why do I keep saying occasion? Is this the Virginia popping out? You can wear bow ties for any occasion that you want, right? But to me, if you don't wear the bow tie on an occasion where it makes sense for you to wear it, it seems a bit out of place and not out of place like you're overdressed and you look a bit more elegant than everybody else, out of place, almost, I hate to say it, but like almost in like a kind of a an immature kind of way. It gives the effect of when you're a kid and you put your, your feet in your dad's shoes. And I think that that comes from a lack of masculine presenting people or images who are not men because when we think, when you are a person of masculine center, you think of, okay, well, what is what does that look like dressed up? Okay, we're not gonna go hyper feminine because we're not gonna be wearing gowns, we're not gonna be dresses, we're not gonna be doing that. And so they're gonna go to the opposite end. So what is hyper masculine? That is kind of that idea or that ideal of, of a buttoned up or more dapper look. And that is the bow tie with the monk strap and you know the suit that very very dapper aesthetic there is no like example of what like what a sophisticated or elegant look is for masculine women that aren't feminine you know there is no example of that so i think we just automatically go to well what is that for men and normally it's that more dapper style i think that there are a lot of people who we have now thanks to instagram that we've seen achieve those dapper looks or just those like very sophisticated looks and i will link them down below but these women have done a very good job of kind of like honing in and fine tuning that style for them and i think that we all could learn a bit from that but yeah, it's just, the bow tie is just isn't necessary all the time. It's just not. And there are so many ways to dress up or be dressy that don't require the bow tie because, and like I said, I come from a background where I've worked in menswear and I think that I am probably a bit more traditional in the ways that I think about formal menswear. And I did it. I did it. <laughs> All right, y'all, that is my video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that I wasn't too critical, um, even though Loki, I was dragging myself because like I said, I've done all of these things. If you are interested in style content, if you're interested in learning on different ways to look masculine or more androgynous and you want a little direction, this is where you need to be. So go ahead and subscribe, all right? Go ahead and like this video, okay? Um, my name has been Jade Fox. This is the Major Look Channel. And of course, wear what you want, wear what you like, wear it out. See you soon.